Well, hello and welcome again. I hope you're doing okay. I just want you to know, Liv and I really miss hanging out with you on a Sunday and we can't wait to be back together again. You are really in our thoughts and prayers and keep emailing, keep in touch. Let us know how you're getting on. Today, I want to speak to you about the challenging times we're facing. You know, the headlines at the moment can be pretty hard to digest. This is a dark hour in the life of our community and our nation. It's tempting at moments like this to lose hope. There's fear, uncertainty, the reality of isolation, the boredom, the frustration, the loneliness, the heartache for those who are grieving today. But in the midst of this storm, there are also stories of extraordinary courage emerging. I was so moved this week to hear from Dr. Abby and others in our community who are on the front line of the fight against this virus. Now, something Dr. Abby said really hit me. In the midst of trials and suffering and sacrifice and courage, she used the phrase, the God of hope. I want to speak to you today about the God of hope. Hope is so powerful. Hope is a weapon. Hope overcomes. Hope changes the equation. Hope is a medicine and an antidote. And you know, when everything else feels lost, the thing that keeps us going is hope. Now here is the good news today. God is the God of hope. In Romans 15 verse 13, the Bible says this, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Today, whatever your circumstance or situation, the God of hope wants to fill you right now where you are. And here's what I want us to understand. Today, he wants to do something in you and he wants to do something through you. First, in you, he wants to fill you with all joy and peace. Earlier in the week, I went to do our weekly shop and around the corner as I was checking out, queuing and and getting there to to check out my stuff, I saw these Easter eggs. And I suddenly remember that in the craziness, I'd forgotten to get my kids Easter eggs. I have three kids, I grabbed three identical Easter eggs. I went out to check out, but the system wouldn't let me buy the Easter eggs. And that's because right now, where we are, the supermarkets have got an automatic two item limit on all purchases to stop people stockpiling stuff. The lovely manager came over and I said, look, I I promise you I'm not stockpiling Easter eggs. I've just got three kids and I'm hoping not to give two of them Easter eggs because that'd be awkward. And thankfully he said, don't worry, it's a glitch. It's an automatic thing. It does not apply to Easter eggs. Right now in God's economy, there is not a two item limit on joy and peace. God doesn't want to ration this for you. It's he wants to fill you with all joy and peace. And that means the whole amount, the largest quantity, as much joy and peace as possible. You know, God's love for you is limitless. He wants to fill you with all the good things that come from his immeasurable love for you. Hebrews 12 verse 2 says this, For the joy that was set before him, for the joy Jesus endured the cross. Jesus This week, we remember it, went to the cross to take hold of joy. And that joy can be yours today supernaturally. Joy for the good times and the hard times. Joy for when you're up and when you're down. Joy when you're struggling and joy when you're overcoming. And then he wants to fill you with all peace. Again, it's not some peace or peace for one hour a day. It's all peace in every area of your body and mind and soul, especially in times of great stress like this. Jesus says this in John 14, 27, speaking in fact of the Holy Spirit, he says, peace I leave with you, peace I give to you. I don't give you as the world gives. Then he says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Don't be afraid. Jesus wants to give you peace today. You know, even in the middle of a hurricane, there's a moment of stillness. How you experience the storm will depend on your position. Even in the fiercest storms, when you're in the eye of the hurricane, it's almost completely still. 
Today, the God of hope wants to meet you in the eye of the storm and fill you with all joy and peace. You might say, that's easy for you to say, Al. You don't know my situation, the challenges. You know, I'm stuck in the lockdown with people. These guys either side of me on the sofa, the kids, everyone's getting on each other's nerves. Or maybe you're on your own, you're feeling anxious. Maybe you're saying, well, I'm only allowed out to exercise. I don't like exercise. How can you talk about peace? Here's the thing. It's not dependent on you. The promise God makes to us is as you trust in him, he'll do the rest. Trust is placing your confidence in somebody else's ability to do it. So all we need to do is put our faith in the God of hope. When we do this, it enables the Holy Spirit, the spirit of the God of hope, to work in our lives. So the challenge for this week is this, lean into Jesus and see what happens. Let the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him this week, worship him, read the Bible, connect online, join a connect group. That's the first thing. Something happens in you. Then, secondly, something happens through you. A chain reaction happens inside of you. You are gonna overflow hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. I've got a friend called Tom. Tom and Anna are bakers. Shout out to them because I know they're watching. And he kindly sent me a jar of his sourdough starter in the post because I want to learn to bake my own bread. Here it is, this little jar. It's about this full with starter. What you do, the instructions say, is you add a little bit of flour and a little bit of water and mix it in every day and you leave it somewhere warm. The first day I did exactly what it said on the tin. The next morning I came back and the thing had completely burst out of the jar. The, the sourdough starter was overtaking the cupboard. It was flowing all over the cereal packets because a chain reaction had happened. It had become more than the sum of its parts. Why? Well, the yeast in the starter mixes with the flour and water and it just begins to grow and bubble and overflow. You see, the point is this. When the God of hope fills you, a chain reaction takes place by the Holy Spirit. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, you begin to overflow hope. I believe today, even right now, even as we pray and worship in a moment, the God of hope wants to fill you that you might overflow hope. What does that look like? Well, you start to do the stuff of the God of hope. When you walk in the room, you bring joy and peace. When you relate to people, you help them experience hope, the God of hope. Maybe you're here today and you're thinking, well, I've never experienced the God of hope. Well, today you can experience the power of the the Spirit filling you right now. You know, Hanley Church, you may say, well, I'm stuck behind locked doors. I'm the other side of the world. I, I can't do much right now. But you are making a difference by being part of this story, by serving and giving and belonging and praying. Wherever you are, you are not isolated. Although you may be isolating, you are part of bringing hope to people's lives. Just look at what's happened in the last couple of weeks. Right now with Lighthouse, it's extraordinary. Hackney Church, you've now distributed nearly 4,000 meals to vulnerable people since this crisis began. That includes 227 hot meals through the Lighthouse Shelter. Takeaways, 3,575 through the food banks that we're running now in Leighton and in Homerton. You know, each week you are in touch with over 140 vulnerable households to provide day-to-day -day support. You've done dozens of deliveries to people who can't shop for themselves. This is what Jesus meant when he said, love your neighbour. You're doing it. You are part of an overflow of hope wherever you are, playing your part. I want to land with the words that Dr. Abby said earlier in this broadcast. She said this, at the end of the day, sometimes we do feel tired and we do feel weary. And it's the hope and strength and the refilling of the Holy Spirit as we pour ourselves out that we will be refilled and not grow weary throughout. Well, right now, just where you are, just as you are, the God of hope wants to fill you with all joy and peace. As you trust in him right now, perhaps for the first time, God wants to fill you so that you may overflow hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.